Coming up on iPads in the Classroom, we're learning to code with iPads. Hi, my name is Guy Trainin and this is iPads in the Classroom from Tech Edge. And today we're talking some more about learning to code with iPads. And I'm going to talk about three different apps that help kids start thinking about the way we code. So the first one is one that I've used in a recent uh, podcast, and that is the Lego Fixit Factory. And in the Lego Fixit Factory, you actually have tasks that a robot is supposed to make, and you're supposed to actually direct that robot. So you can see, and I'll show you one of the early levels. So in this level, there's a clear task, and that is the robot is supposed to get to a specific point on, in the floor. And if you notice, there really isn't a lot of text showing up in any way, shape, or form. It is easy for kids who are not reading yet and anybody else beyond that. So right now, all we need to do is make two steps forward. So we make a program, and that's the first action in the program, and that is the second one, and then we execute. And you can see how when we execute, they're actually showing us which steps are happening in real time. And that is an important concept to understand how the program you make is actually impacting the robot. So you get a, you get a score, you get a time, and then you can continue to the next challenge. And the next challenge is always a little bit more complicated. Let's do another one just so you can get the concept here. And in this one, it's a little more complicated. You have to make a turn first, but then uh, get to the same goal. And what you can see is whenever a new command shows up, there's a little direction that shows you how that command will impact the robot. So we first need to make a right turn and then uh, need to go forward and forward again. And what is important here is that this actually starts requiring anybody using it to start thinking about what it looks like from the position of the robot and not just from the way we look at it, because the way we look at it, it's a left turn, but for the robot standing there, it's actually a right turn. So that requires a little bit of uh, mental agility and uh, development and there'll be probably some trial and error. By the way, if you want to move things around, you can just move the order of commands as you go along. So that's another way to do this. We press, and we can see that that was probably not a good program. So it tells you where the problem is, and now we can fix that, or at least attempt to fix it. First going straight, then going to that point. We get the green light. We get that the level is completed. And then at the end, we get the score. And the score, again, is how many attempts were made, how many errors we had, how many moves we used. So it goes back to efficiency and eventually how long uh, it took to get there. And their levels, as they get along, get more and more complicated with more and more demands and more and more possible actions. So the programming gets more sophisticated. So this is the Lego Fixit Factory. The next app I want to talk about is about Cato's Hike. And this is the light version. You can buy additions that will make it more sophisticated. But I think there's quite a bit to do even before you decide to invest any more in uh, the work. You can choose a character. I'll choose the, just a regular character. And uh, play a tutorial. And you can see that they walk you, just like all of these other apps, they walk you through the process and really teach you about how you can use this. Uh, this is a very simple program that is just go forward, right? And then you just press the go button to execute the program. Now, as you can see, this can be much more sophisticated than many of the other ones. So the commands can be really, really intricate into uh, how you execute them. And if you go to the next one, you can see and it guides you through what do you need to do. So you can delete, you can add actions, right? I can add, since this is the tutorial, they tell you exactly what you're supposed to be doing. So 
here's my program and now I can just execute it. But if you look at the possible commands, right? You see that the next one is actually a loop that allows you to give the same command over and over again. So this is walk, right? This is the walk command. And this is the loop command. And when you do the loop command, you can uh, repeat that loop command as many times as you need. And now you can see that it keeps on looping. And this is a little bit hard to see, but it actually highlights what action is happening right now. It's a little bit fast to capture, especially in the, uh, in the simple programs. It gets a little bit better as you go along. One of the features that I really like about this one is that you can actually save specific programs, and you can also send them to somebody else. So you can save your program. It can be Guy's uh, program. And I can save my solution to a specific problem. And as the problems get more complicated, it's worthwhile saving. And I can also share my program when uh, I press on that. And that's only if you get the full version. You can actually email your solution to somebody else, including your teacher. So this one is called Cato's Walk. And as things get more uh, sophisticated, you can actually uh, you have to avoid some of the bugs that are around. You have to go around obstacles, over obstacles, and you have different possible solutions. It can get rather sophisticated. So uh, it's another option to talk about programming uh, for kids. The last one I want to talk about is called Daisy the Dinosaur. And Daisy the Dinosaur can help you learn to program. And you can see that there's a small subset of commands possible here, and they're all about movement. So we can build a program that says roll, then uh, move, right? Then repeat five times, right? And you see the minute move came up, it says, do you want to move forward, sideways? Where do you want to move, forward or backwards? Let's keep it at forward. Repeat five times, five times, let's grow five times. Then we can have a shrink command. And then we can have another command. Let's try a when, right? When we either shake or touch, let's do touch. I don't want to shake here. Uh, it shrinks again, right? And now we can play that program. They rolled, moving forward, growing five times, and then shrinking. And if I touch it, It'll shrink again. So you can see that you can build from very simple subset of commands, you can actually build a very sophisticated program that includes loops with repeating, it includes directionality, and it includes interactivity. So actually kids can create it and then have somebody else play with it. It has two modes. This one was created in the free mode, where you can create whatever you want. But there's also a challenge mode, where you're actually asked to perform a specific program. And then you're evaluated on how efficiently and how well you are able to uh, mimic the directions that are expected. So you can use it both ways. And kids can learn just by experimenting, or they can learn by trying to reach a specific goal. So today on iPads in the Classroom, we talked about three more apps that help you think and help kids think about programming at different levels. They're all challenging, they're all extremely fun, and I bet if you open the door to kids playing with these programming apps, they would actually start coding, not just in school, but anywhere they go and they have access to these programs. Uh, if they don't have access to devices at home, uh, going on a computer and using it on uh, various websites that provide the same service would be great as well. So we'll see you next time on iPads in the Classroom.